Okay, so today Salesforce Lightning Day 23. Let's see what are we going to learn. We'll quickly go through the previous session. And today we will talk about calling a server-side class from the Lightning Aura. And we'll talk one of the concept called Lightning Select. And then we'll have a homework conclusion quiz. Today, interview question. Now, last session, whatever we have discussed, what we have discussed is in the lightning component. So this is my lightning component. This is my lightning component. In this lightning component, I have implemented. So in this lightning component, this is the lightning component which where we have written all the aura tags, everything we have written and we were having a add multiplication, division or everything, all the calculation was there. Now, for all of this, we have given a common method. For all of this, we have used a common operator, like a handle operator. Handle operator. So this handle operator was calling the JavaScript. So this is a lightning JavaScript. So here we have a one of the method called handler, handle operator. So whenever user click on any of this button, what used to happen is this is directly calling the JavaScript. Now from the JavaScript, whatever the heavy load piece is there, the heavy load piece which we have moved into the helper. Heavy load piece we have moved into the helper. That means there is a common logic for all of these buttons, uh, like a add, multiplication, subtraction, even for equal to, which is a calculate. So for all of this, we, ha we have moved that heavy lifting logic into the helper. And which we have implemented here, one of the method called handle helper. Handle helper. So this method we have implemented and we were calling from the JavaScript to helper. So how, in order to call the helper, we have learned yesterday, in order to call that, we have to use the helper dot handle helper. And then here we have a, usually in the JavaScript, the standard parameters are component event helper. But helper has only one parameter, which is called a component. But apart from this, you can pass number of things. Like you can pass. So like you can pass the num, num array or a operator, or if you want any other information. Like this, you can pass other parameters. You can pass multiple parameters, but out of these three component event helper, only component parameter must need to be used in the helper. And if you are passing, you have to pass only the component. We should not be passing the event or a helper, but other operator like a other data types, whatever you wanted to pass, you can pass, which is possible. And also within the helper, we have implemented a additional methods, which is a add, mult, right? These methods, which we have implemented. So in case if I wanted to call, in case if I wanted to call helper method from the helper method, from that helper method, handle helper, if I wanted to call handle. So in that case, we have to use this dot, whatever the, method is there. In this case, add is there. So for add, if there is any parameter which is expected, we can pass that parameter. So this is what we have learned yesterday. So the first piece is heavy lifting of the helper, uh, the logic has been moved from the JavaScript to the helper. Now today concept, we are going to learn, we have a lightning component and there is a Apex class. How can I call from the lightning component? That means when calling is nothing but in case if I wanted to pass any request while calling them, there are two things. 
the first thing is that how can I hit, how can I hit the Apex class, which way I need to hit it. This is the first one. In case if I wanted to call a specific uh, method or if I wanted to send some information from the lightning component, how can I send that request to the Apex class? How can I send that request to the Apex class? And the third one is how can I receive the response back to the lightning component? So we are going to see all these steps today. All these steps today. So first we are going to focus on how to call the Apex class. Now let's go ahead and see this. So in order to call, in order to call the server side, Okay. So here I have a lightning component and this side I have Apex. This side I have a Apex. This is a lightning component. And this is Apex class. In Apex class, usually whenever we create a Apex class, we write public public class and then we'll give a class name like a example class this is example class then we'll have it open curly braces and then finally end curly braces now within this within this we will be implementing a multiple methods we will be implementing multiple methods so, so far, whoever is attending my development classes, so far, whatever we have learned is in order to create a method, the sub program. So, the sub program, public, static, void. Then I have here M1, which is my method name. And this is open and this is close. And inside this, we will be writing all our logic inside this, like for example, inserting a account, insert account. Now, but here in this scenario, calling the Apex, why we are calling, what is the necessary that Lightning component needs to call the Apex class? Because Lightning component is expecting some output from the Apex, right? So once it is inserted, either I need to pass a ID, account ID to the lightning component, or I need to pass complete account record, or I need to pass the complete account record. So that's the reason we are calling the Apex, right? So in the Apex, I'm doing some business logic. This is the business logic. So whenever I write the business logic, final output, whatever is there out of this method, Right. So what are the output of the business logic is that that logic has to send it to we have to send to lightning component, then only lightning component will take that output of the logic and it will display onto the user interface. Now, in order to send a output, that means once I'm done with my business logic, I need to return a data. I need to return a data. When I say data, it could be a single record or it could be a, a account ID. Whatever the new account ID is there, I need to return this. I need to return back to the Lightning component. But when we use this sub program, when we are writing the sub program, where we have a, this, this is a procedure. So we have a static void M1. When we say static void, Will I be able to return the output? Is the return value will be there for the static void? No. no, it won't be there. So I cannot return if I'm using the void. Void is nothing but I cannot return output. So that's the reason in this lightning component, for lightning component, if you are implementing any Apex method, we should not, most of the time, we should not use a void. Most of the time, we should not use a void for the lightning component. If you are calling the Apex 
particular apex or a particular method if you are calling from lightning component we should not use a void but what should i need to use instead of a void there is a another sub program two type of a sub program one is procedure another one what is that function function, function. so the difference between the procedure and function static no static yes so procedure is it will not return the output but whereas a function it will return the output so here i need to use instead of a void i need to use a data type here i need to use a data type what is this data type it has to match with your whatever the output you are returning whatever the output you are returning back so it has to match with this for example if i say here um integer or if i say here string right if i say here string that means this whatever the output is there it has to be string in case if i write here instead of a string if i write here account if i write here account that means i need to give a output account record a single account record in case if you want a list of a account records to be written then what should be the data type here list of collection of list account list of account so we need to use list of account now in case if i wanted to print here i'm inserting the position okay i'm insert inserting the position record and i'm i'm returning the just one position complete record so what should be the value here what should be the data type here i'm return returning the single position record here list of position i'm returning and that's one that's cosy i'm returning the single record okay position position and let's go see position double underscore underscore c now in case if i am returning here number what should be the data type here integer integer so it's based on what you are returning it okay so if you are returning the account record it has to be here it should be account acc and here insert acc perfect so that is one change so this and this has to be matched this is first thing right so this is first thing and then in order to enable the apex this is normal apex okay in normal also we write this uh, function method or for another things also like if you are calling from any other not only the lightning component for example i have a different class okay different apex class so that different apex class is calling this m1 method and that apex class is expecting an output from m1 so in that case also i have to use the return because based on the return value the other apex class need to be modified some other logic based on this return value the logic has to be executed okay so this is normal but in order to lightning comp now how can i say that this apex class is used in the lightning component or this apex class is or this apex method is called from lightning component how can i identify so i have opened in some apex class okay when i open the apex class it seems like a normal apex class you know, i have a class here i have a method here i have multiple methods that's all fine so could be possible that another apex class is also calling this so that's the reason we have written here data type and written is acc that's totally fine but if my lightning component or lwc component is calling this particular method how can i identify first of all how can i enable apex 
saying that you are open for lightning aura component you are open for lwc component how to say we have to add one annotation one annotation before the method we have to add annotation so which is at the rate aura enabled at the rate aura enabled that means Aura enabled annotation enables the lightning component to access the Apex method or their properties. That means I'm telling this method is now open to lightning component, now open to lightning Aura component. Now it is open to LWC. Any Aura or LWC can call this method and they can use all the properties that are defined in this method. We are expanding the access of the properties that are defined inside the method. I'm opening up for the Lightning Aura and LWC. So the first thing is that we need to tell the Apex class by mentioning the annotation at the rate Aura enabled. So providing this annotation makes the Apex method available to Lightning component or Lightning web component. So lightning component, lightning web component, it will be only able to access the method if there is an annotation here. So this is called annotation. So this is the first one. So this is a first one. which is called annotation. This is called The first one is annotation. We call it as a So what is that annotation here? So at the rate aura enabled. At the rate aura enabled. So by adding this, either lightning aura component or lightning web component can access this particular method and their properties. What are the properties are defined there? So only the method with this annotation are exposed to the lightning aura or LWC. And definitely it will return the value to the lightning component. Right. So, so this is the first one. This is first one which we need to. The first thing is that we need to enable the Apex class by saying annotation called at the rate aura enabled. So the first thing in the Apex step one, the aura enabled annotation enables the lightning component to access Apex method and their properties. So Aura enabled annotation. Aura enabled annotation enables the lightning component to access Apex method and their properties. So like this, we will write at the rate Aura enabled. At the rate Aura enabled. So providing this annotation makes the Apex method available to lightning component, which is Aura component or a web component. So only method with this annotations are exposed. So that's what we have discussed right now. So method should return the value to lightning component. That means it has to have a return statement at the end. So once my business logic is done, there should be a return statement. So, and whenever we are implementing a method, it has to be static method. So static, and then you give a data type here. And use the Aura enabled on Apex instance method and properties to make them serialized when an instance of the class is returned as a data from the server side. So that means whatever, whenever you write at the rate Aura enabled on the in uh, before the method, right? So what happens is all the properties and everything will be serialized when the instance of the class is returned. That means whenever we are returning it, it will automatically serialize the data and it will pass it to the lightning component. 
So this is the first step. Now we are done with the apex side. Now we are done with the apex side. Now come back to the lightning component. Lightning component. So in the lightning component, we have a multiple things. We have multiple things. One is a lightning component. And then we have a controller here. And then we have a helper here, right? So this is my component. So this is my component and this is my controller and this is helper. This is helper. Now in the component, in the component, first of all, I need to connect saying lightning component. You need to use this particular class. We need to say lightning component, go ahead and use this particular class because the class is already implemented. Whatever the uh, rules are there, that rules are applied to this class. Now you go ahead and use this example class. So how can I say lightning component? So when we are defining the aura component, right? So we'll have a starting whenever we create a component, it will say aura component. And then we'll have a end of it, closing aura component. End of it, closing aura component. Now in the aura component, starting of this, here we have one of the attribute called controller. We have the one of the attribute called controller. So we need to specify controller equal to, we have to say Apex class name. Here I need to mention the Apex class name. Apex class name. Now, in this case, what is the Apex class name? Example class. So, example class. Right, so this is example class. Yeah. Okay, so let me write again aura colon component. And then we have a attribute called controller equal to, we need to say Apex class name. Here, my Apex class name, example class. So this is my class name. So we have to use the attribute called controller. By using this controller, by using this controller, I can call Apex Close aura colon component. So the second step is the second step is this one. This is the second step. So what is the second step here? Second step is in the lightning component. In lightning component. In the lightning component, we have to use controller attribute. 
controller equal to we have to specify the apex class name apex class name so where we should be writing this controller this controller has to be in aura component tag aura component tag right so in lightning component controller equal to apex class name and this controller has to be in aura component tag so this is the second one this is the second one so step 2 is in lightning component to write up the apex controller to the component by using the just say controller equal to apex class now, whenever I say controller, Apex class, what, it, what will happen here? It will enable the connection. So, the connection got enabled here. So, the connection got enabled between the Apex and Lightning component. The connection has enabled between the component and class. It is very high level. The connection has established. But we are actually interested in method, right? Inside this class, I have a sub program. We are sub program is there. So th there are multiple sub programs out there, right? There is a possible that there are multiple sub programs out there. Out of that, only one sub program we have to call. Okay. But right now, what we have done by giving the controller equal to example class, that means I enable the high level connection between the lightning component and Apex. Between the lightning component and Apex. Now, the third step, the connection has been established. That's, that is perfect. Now, out of 10, I need to call a specific method. I'm not interested of all, all the nine methods. Out of 10, only one method which I'm interested, that is what we need in the lightning component. So how can I call that component in helper? We have to do, we have to always call the method from the helper. Always call the method from the helper. So this, whatever this helper is there, will be connecting to the Aura method, sorry, Apex method. Now, what is the logic that I need to write it here in order to connect my Apex method? So the first thing is that, the first step is that I need to call the server side method. First step is call server side method. server side method. First step is server side method. I need to call the method. How can I call the method? Simple step, we have a component dot get. I have to use the component dot get. And here I need to specify the method name. Here I need to specify the method name. I need to specify the method name. Now, in this case, what is the method name? M1. 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 So, we say C colon M1. Okay. This is first I'm connecting it. So, by writing this, what will happen is it's getting it. So, that doesn't mean that it is able to access this. No, it is just I'm connecting it, connecting to M1. Then sometimes we will have uh, some parameters to uh, this method. Right now there is nothing, but sometimes we need to pass certain data from lightning component to lightning component to Apex class. So that means there should be uh, some parameters which are expected from the lightning component. Now, the second thing is, second is pass the parameters to method. Pass the parameters to method. Now, how can I pass the parameters to method? So, 
whatever this is the component dot get whatever component dot get is there this component dot get once i have written that logic it will be stored in one variable it will be stored in one variable var action equal to var action equal to component dot get right so this will be stored into the action now once i have that variable we have to use action dot action dot set params set params similar like a event whatever we do event dot set params similarly here also whenever we are calling the method that method the structure is stored into the action now action dot set params within this set params we have to write a object whatever the things that you wanted to pass it you need to bend it into the javascript right so here you need to write a like a key value pair key value pair you have to pass right so we will see one example of that so right now assume that the object has to be passed okay so like this open and curly braces inside the curly braces you need to specify key value pair now you pass the parameter okay now this two has been done now there is nothing has invoked there is nothing has called yet i'm just writing the skeleton structure here okay till now it's not invoked my apex method till now it is not invoked my apex method I just return here component dot get c colon what are the m one is there it's a c colon m one and then I'm passing the parameter because that method is expected the param parameters right so what are the parameters were expected by the whatever the parameters are expected by the apex method that needs to be passed here it's not a c colon it's a c dot. It's a C dot. So C dot M1. C dot M1. So that means you are calling a method. Now, second one is I have a passing the parameter. But it doesn't mean that it is already my method is called, already it is process, processing the parameters, everything, lo the logic gets executed. No. So far, whatever we have written, it's just a skeleton structure. It's just a skeleton structure. Somebody has to come and hit this event. Somebody has to hit this event. How can I invoke this particular method? So there is a third step here. It is invoke the server side method invoke server side method invoke server side methods so when it is invoked server side methods okay when it is invoked server side method basically i need to use the action whatever the variable name is there that action and then Say here, set callback. Set callback. That means action dot set callback. That means invoke it, get the result back. Invoke the method and get the result back. So once the results are back, this comma function and then the response. What are the response which I'm getting it? Everything you can use it inside this. So it will be similar like an event how we used to do here also this comma function and then you have a curly braces this. And here you can write any name. You can write rest, response or a result, anything you can write it. Action dot set callback. Action dot set callback. Now these three steps if you write it and you forgot to write one more step, 
very important step is the last one. If you do not write that step, the invoke does not happen. Hitting the Apex method is does not happen. The last one is very important, which is called which is called NQ action. Fourth one is NQ or let's say pipeline. Pipeline method. This fourth one is very important. Though you have written the previous one, like if you have written all three steps, but you forgot to write this NQ action, then it will not call your Apex method. Now I'll explain what is this NQ action, but let's see the command first. So for this NQ action, we have to use the logic dollar a dot NQ action. And in this NQ action, we have to pass whatever the variable that we have set here. That variable has to be passed here. That variable has to be passed here. So whatever the variable is there action, if you have written AC, here it should be AC and here also AC, here also AC. If you say here some other uh, variable like a Method, if you are it, uh, writing as a method one, here also method one, here also method one, here also method one. Now, when you write all these steps and when you write the fourth one, what happens is it actually hits your Apex method and it gets back your logic and directly your logic will be come back to this. Now, first let's understand what is the NQ action. So NQ action is nothing but what it does is what are the actions that we are writing here? What are the actions which we are writing here? Basically what it does is it add the everything into the queue, everything into the queue. That means first it will set up his structure. First it will set up his structure. That means how many methods, how many actions are there here? So put them everything in the queue. Now, once it is put them into the queue, as soon as it the, uh, the time it comes to execute, this will hit and execute only one time to the Apex and come back to us. That means by adding this, what will happen? So this is to add the server side. This is to add the server side controller actions, whatever the actions are there to the queue. Queue of action that needs to be executed. Now I cannot say because of this it is invoking it. No, you cannot say that. This is the, this is given by the lightning aura. This is given by the lightning aura. So what it does is basically it sends the request to the server. It sends the request to the server. Like if I have to say, it will add the calls, whatever the calls to the queue, where calls are there, which is happening to the method, Apex method those calls, it will add to the queue of asynchronous. It will add, there will be a queue will be generated. It's kind of a, um, in theater queue, we, you know, normal English meaning of queue, right? So that's the same meaning here. It will keep everything in the one background. There is a framework which is there at the background of this. So what happens is at the back end of this, there is a, some framework. So there is a, framework which is there here. So when this turns comes, what it does, it will add all those actions into the a queue. So there is here, it will, gen it will add every action here. Now in this case, we have only one action. In real time, if you have a two actions or a multiple actions are there, so what it does is, whatever you are doing it, everything it will add those into the this framework. So what is this framework? This framework is a NQ action framework. 
So this framework queues up the action before sending them to the server. First, it will build this framework. Then once it is built, then it all of them, everything will be sent to the server. So that means the, this mechanism is like a transparent. We cannot see here uh, in the code, but it, this is the backend framework which is happened. Why they have implemented this framework is basically to minimize the network traffic by batching the multiple action into one request. Now, if you have a multiple action, so everything it will combine into the group and it will send only one request to the Apex method. Now, instead of sending, a, okay, this is one request, this is another request, this is another request. Every time you are calling this to the Apex method, but instead of doing this, everything combined into the NQ action so that it will create a framework. By using the framework, what will happen? So whatever the multiple actions are there, everything will be sent to one request to the Apex method. It will not happen multiple requests. But invoke, who is doing it? Invoke is done by this. This is just a framework it gets created in order to make all the actions into the queue up in the line. But invoke is done by the third. Okay, but that doesn't mean that if I do not write the fourth one, I can I can call and I can implement it. No, fourth one is very important. You need to have it. You have to, whether it is a one action or a multiple action, you have to put that everything into the framework. Then only you can able to call it. There is a tightly bond connection with the Apex class and the light, lightning dollar a dot nq action. Right, so the third one is in the lightning helper. So let me write here also. So the third one is third one in lightning helper. In lightning helper. In Lightning Helper. So basically, we need to add four steps. So step one is to call the server side. So whatever the, the method which I wanted to call, we have to call the call server side method. So how can I call the server side method? First component dot get component method name. Get and then we C have dot method name. Method name. And then we have to store this into one variable. One variable. Step two. Passing the parameter. Parameter. How can I pass the parameter? A variable name dot set params. Action dot set dot set params. Step three, invoke the server method. How can I invoke the server method? Action dot set callback. Action dot set callback. Callback. Set and this is. comma function name function and then we have object step four nq action how can i call the nq action dollar a dot nq action and 
Okay. Now, any questions? Anybody did not get the clarity anywhere? Uh, Swapna? Yeah. Uh, this uh, dollar a dot nq action usually we use for handling the asynchronous jobs, right? This is also asynchronous. Basically. Yeah, so that may, yeah, so that means uh, the server actions will be all uh, will be always called asynchronously, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So multiple whatever the actions are there, everything will be put into the framework. And it gets asynchronously hitting the multiple methods. If you are writing a multiple method call, so it is hitting the at one shot because only one request it's sending. So when it sends one request, so what should happen? It has to go back to the, okay, this is calling the public method. So go here and this is calling. So go here one and go to the, so this one, go to the, this one. So everything it will, while sending itself, it will divide that and go to the multiple. But this immediately happen, asynchronously happens this. Asynchronously happens this. It's not a sequence. At one shot, all of them will be hitting it. Okay. So anybody, any questions? Again, I'm repeating, first step is do Aura enabled, at the rate Aura enabled in Apex. When you are doing the Aura enabled, check the static, if what is the data type, and check the what is the return type. So that is the first one. Second one, you need to add the controller in the lightning component to enable the higher connection between the lightning component and Apex. And then helper, you have a four step, call the server side method. So now you have to call this method and then pass the parameter to method and then invoke the server method and that means call back. So invoke it and send me the response. So who is doing the actual invoke is basically $a.nq action, it does hit the things and it will send the response back to the callback here. So in this callback, whenever the response is received, the response will be stored in the function. So by using this function, I can check what is the status and whether it is a successful, then I'll print it. Now, is anybody not clear this entire flow? Uh, so now, uh, see, so I have a doubt now. Uh, what is that? Suppose I want to, uh, I want to call uh, two uh, methods. Okay, now suppose uh, you have one method m1 and there is another method m2. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to call m1 inside m2 or something. You know, like because you said they are call always called asynchronously, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to make, uh, I want to make sure that m1 has completed first, and only then I want to call m2. Yes, you can do that. So when we get a call back, so we have a status. Status success means the execution of M1 is done. The logic is done. Now inside this, when it is success, I can call another one component dot get C dot M2 here. Another oh. action which I can implement within this function. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and see one of the use case. So this is the step three, call the server side method, pass the parameter, invoke the server side method, NQ pipeline. So call the server side method, component dot get method name and store that into one variable action and the pass the parameter action dot set params and then invoke the server side method, action dot set callback, this comma function and the response nq the pipeline so dollar a dot uh, nq action so nq action is nothing but it sends the request the server so more precisely it adds the calls to the queue of asynchronous server calls so this queue is an optimized feature of the lightning right so that's what we have discussed the framework queue queues up action before sending them to the server 
So this mechanism is largely transparent while writing the code, but it enables the framework to minimize the network traffic by batching the multiple action into one request. So that's all, so let's see the use case. Now, implement a lightning component to display all the account names, all the account names I wanted to display. Now let's go to the lightning component. So right now this has enabled, my connection is enabled. So let's go up, right click. No, first I need to create an Apex class. So what I'll do is, do I have an Apex class here? Yes, classes are there. So I'll right click on it, create an Apex class. Let's say that this is my account controller. ACC controller. Hit enter, yes, classes. Public. Here by default in the Visual Studio, it comes as a with sharing, but you can remove it. We will talk about with sharing without sharing later. Now, public class ACC controller and it will automatically create the method, but we have to change the method. So the first thing is we have to, if I have to call the method from the lightning component, what is the first thing which we need to do? Add the red or enable. Add the red or enable. So when I write at the rate aura enable, it will automatically add up the method. So this is a Visual Studio concept. So when I add this aura enable, it is giving me the public static string method name. Okay, I'll remove everything inside it. Okay, so here we are going to return the let's list of accounts. List of account. Let's give the method name get accounts. Now, how can I get the list of accounts? As of everybody. Okay. What do uh, I do? List, list, list of account. account. List, list of account. account. ACC. Reference variable. It is list first. Select. Like ID or okay. rating, rating, comma, yes, phone, email, and which phone, 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 email, email, we don't have, I guess, industry, 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 and then from, let's take a type, yeah, from, from account, account, account. So right now I'm taking all of them, but do I need all these fields? Do I need all these fields here? What is my requirement? Implement lightning all component to display all the Name accounts. Names. 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 Only names only. So I'll take ID from uh, name. name. From account. Fine. Now, next, this is my return. return. Yeah, return SEC list. Return SEC list. Perfect. Done. Account controller. Okay. Fine, and then I'll also write here, description. Description. Get all account ID and name. That's it. And then we have it written. So 
returning the so, no, 17th line. What happened to 17th line? Braces is extra. Okay. So returning all account list. Perfect. So let's deploy this. Okay, so let's deploy this class. Right click, deploy source to org. Perfect, it is deployed. Now, second step is we'll go to the Aura component. So, right click on this, create Aura component. Let's say that LC underscore all account names, control A, control C, hit enter, yes, Aura. Now, Aura component, what is the second step which I need to do? Control in that controller, we have to return class name. Controller attribute, and then mm -hmm. I have to write c dot method. But class name, it's not a c dot method, it's a class name here. Controller is always a controller name, which is the class name. On the lightning component, we have to write controller equal to class name. Controller equal to class name. Now, so I need one attribute to store all the account list. How can I store all the account list in the attribute? Which attribute do I need it? I need to store all the account list. Which attribute? Which data type? Uh, account or list? Maybe yes, object. Yeah, list. Because it's what I'm printing at the out list of the accounts, right? So the type should be list. Okay. That's all. And what else I need? Now, whenever it is loading the component, I need to get those information from the Apex controller. That means as soon as the component is loaded, as soon as the component is loaded, so this is my component, the user interface. As soon as this component is loaded, I need to see all the Account names here, what are the account names are there? Everything I wanted to see here. So that means where, which method I need to write this logic if I want that. When my component is open, I need all the list of accounts here. Handler. Which handler? Init. Init handler. So I do not need any button. So directly what I can do, Aura Handler. Aura Handler. Yes. Name. What? Name in it. Yeah. Action. Action. This. Speed that is not the action. Okay. Action yeah, yeah. which method you are calling. There is a, another one which is called value. Value. This. Perfect. Yes. Now let's go to the do in it. Let's copy this. Go to the controller. Let's keep the name to it, doing it. 
Now, I need to call the Apex business logic. From where it is best to call the Apex business logic? From where do I need to call the Apex business logic? Do I need to call it from the component, controller, helper, renderer? Helper class. Helper class. Helper. helper. Let's go to the helper. So let's write the component. Now, here, four steps. The first one is call. Step one, call server side method. Step two, what is the step two? Ask the parameter. parameter. Ask the parameter. Step three. Invoke uh, the server In method. Server method. Server side. And step four. MQ action. MQ action. Now, how can I call the server side method? Component dot get. C dot method name. Component dot C dot class name. Method name. Method name. So component dot get C dot method name. Then I'm going to store this into the one variable. Okay, first step is done. Now, what is the second step? Pass the parameter. Pass the parameter. But do I need to pass any parameter here? No. Okay. We don't need it. So we can ignore the step two. Step three? Invoke uh, server side. So what is the command? Action dot uh, set yes. callback. Yes. Set callback. Set callback. So here, this comma, what do I need to write? Function. 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 Then let's take a response. Step four. NQ actions. How to dollar write? Dot. Dollar 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 NQ dollar. Action. NQ action. What do I need to pass it to NQ action? Action. Action. Right, so this is fine. Now, whatever this method is there, this method I'll call from the controller. Because I cannot call the business logic from, I mean, I can call it, but the best way is directly calling from the helper is a good. Now that helper method, I'll call it from here, helper dot. Helper method and pass the parameter. Component. Done. Now, we are calling it, I'm getting the response. But I need to store some data in the ACC list. Then only I can display the data. But displaying, we have not written anything here. But I need to store that output into this attribute called ACC list. I need to store the output. So the output which I'm getting here in the action dot set callback, this comma function and the response. Within this, I'm getting the response. So what I'll do is inside this, if first of all I need to check what is the state of the response, whether my response is success or whether my response is has error or whether my response is invalid, right? Similar like an event, how we used to check, right? So similarly, here also I need to check the response. What is my response state? If I wanted to check my response state, we have to use response dot get 
state response dot get state store this into one variable var state equal to var state equal to response dot get state that means i just wanted to know whether it is the 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 return back is a successful or return back is a error or return back is a invalid or return back is undefined right so we wanted to check the those all so usually we check in the real time state either equal to status or equal to error or equal to invalid so now if i check state equal to if i say success now here i need to write once it is a success set the output value into my attribute so what is my attribute here v dot acc list this is my output v dot acc list now how can i get it from this response from this response dot get all the values like a get return values whatever it is returning it get return value perfect so what i am doing here whatever this response is there this response keyword or if you write something also fine you this is not a hard coded one you can use any name you can use any name so once the response once the response is once we received it first check what is my status what is my status what is my status whether it is a successful or whether it is a um, error or invalid then take all the return values that are coming to the response take all the values returned from the returning from the apex class how can i take it get return value so get return value is going to give me all the information now i can store the list of account to the list of acc list this is also type is list now somebody was uh, saying anybody know the equal to there is a double equal to and a triple equal to is there anybody is aware double equal to and triple equal to yes okay so what is the double equal to uh, double equals to is mass uh, match the text not a data type right what is triple equal to it's match the data type also so triple so, equal to is more of what type of data it is and also the value the comparison it is going to do two things compare if you write a three triple equal to the comparison will be for a two two things one is data type first it will check what is the data type this side what are the variable is there this side what are the variable is there is these two variables data type is same or not and the second criteria is value it is going to check so if you write just a double equal to it is just going to check the value so let me put triple equal to here so let's say I'm done. ACC list. I'm storing the value. Any questions in the helper method? Anybody? Helper method. Any questions? Okay. So now I have everything stored into the ACC list. Now in this ACC list, now I need to display the ACC list. In order to display the ACC list, what I'll do is I'll use the lightning card within the lightning card let me write the lightning card so let's say title equal to account name so names account names and let's use this now acc list is a type is a list type is list now, how can I print each value? That means print the first value in first row. Print the second value in second row. 
in sequence, how can I print all the names like line by line? Which tag do I need to use it? That means I need to loop through the each one of them. For example, there is a 25 records are there. I need to loop through the each one of them and print the name. Iterating. Iterating, yes. What is the tag for the iterating? For loop. That is Our the tag. Iterator. Our iterator. Aura iteration. So for Aura iteration, we have a item. So which is items equal to, I need to pass what is the attribute. So we need to pass it exclamation B dot ACC, ACC list. That is my at items and then Definitely, we have to give a variable to it. So variable, I'm just giving here item. Or you can give any other. Let's say that um, ACC. OK. Now hit Enter. Now within this, I need to print each name, right? So I can directly write ACC.name. That is totally fine. But what I'm going to use is here, one tag which is a html tag op option is there there is a option so just to format it that's it and there is no other thing so value equal to so value equal to i'll tell you why i have used the option here because i'm going to extend this logic so you can directly print here acc.name but i'm using here option value equal to let's say that here acc dot id because whenever the user selects something whenever user selects something back end i wanted to capture the id with the name we cannot capture with the name we cannot capture so i'll use here okay if, if you are confusing it, I'll just write it here, exclamation ACC dot name. So directly you can print this. What I'm doing here, ACC dot name. I'm simply doing the ACC dot name. I'm printing the ACC dot name. So just to make it differentiate, paragraph, let me put the paragraph, now type ACC name. Perfect, so my component is done iteration card and that's all and then my controller is calling helper helper and then helper method perfect now i'll push this changes to the deploy source to org What's the issue? Aura handler. Specific, okay. Um, let's go to the component, Aura handler. Value, okay, space. Now right click, deploy source to org. What is error? Deployment is failed. What's the error? Okay, that's fine. Let me check this class is there or not. ACC controller. Let's go to the developer console. Resume. Refresh. File open resource. 
Yeah, ACC controller is there. Perfect. Now let me check. File open. LC underscore all. It's not there. Now let me go back here. Let's close this class. Component. Okay. Helper, helper method component in the action component dot get action dot set callback. This karma function response. Why it is saying a deploying error? Set callback. In queue action, let me try again one more time. Right click, deploy source to org. Okay, so open default org. Okay, successful. Let me comment this. Control S, deploy this source to arc. Why? Is there something we have written wrong here? Action. C dot do in it, in it, our handler name, helper dot helper method. Okay. okay, it is deployed. What is the problem here? There is some problem with this code. Swapna? Yeah. Uh, don't, um, actually, I have joined a little late, so I'm having one question. <laughs> mentioned get accounts method right so how should the compiler knows which which class it, it should go because the class is mentioned here controller okay yes. let me refresh this open resource LC underscore all, all account components. Let's say, okay, so helper, 
I'll save this. 16th line. What is the 16th line? In Q spelling. Oh. Okay, so let's uncomment these changes. To comment these changes, let's say right click, deploy the source to work. Okay, now let's go back to let's go back to the application. Let's include that application here. C colon lc underscore all account names perfect let's click on a preview what happened all the names which i'm getting here okay let me add some space there so lightning let me add space here class equal to SLDS hyphen P. Um, I need a left side, left side extra large. I'll use this. Deploy the source to our. Okay, so let's refresh this. Okay. So from Akash, whatever I have till industry, every record it is printed with the name. Every record it is printed with name. Now, instead of displaying the name like this, instead of displaying the name like this, what I'll do is I'll create one uh, select kind of a drop down. So it is kind of a drop down where we'll have a two icons here. So when you click on this, when you click on this, when you highlight your cursor here, what will happen is it will open up all the records in the drop down. So that means you can here you will have a scrolling button. So you can scroll all of them, all the records are getting displayed here. Right, so based on the selection, whatever you are selecting here, the selection will go back to here. That means it is similar like a drop down. You are opening up the drop down and selecting one record here so that that record is displayed here. Right, so for that, we have a, some concept in the Lightning is called Lightning Select. Lightning Select. So, what is this means? to display the list of name in the drop-down. For example, you wanted to display all the account names and based on the name selection, you wanted to display the certain value below. So it is similar like, like this. So this is choose one and here one arrow mark will be there. And when you hover on this cursor, so what will happen is you can see all the values here, drop-down kind of a thing. And you can scroll down and you can select one of them so that it will be displayed here. So the attribute for the lightning select is mandatory is label. So because you need to mention here what is the label, the text that describe the select input here, whatever the input that you wanted to give. So here it is a select account, how many tickets, and then if this is a name, this is not the specify. Here it is. Uh, another attribute is names. So another attribute is we have a name. So name is specify the name of input. Like a when you select here one, now you need a variable to hold here what is the value that is selected. Possible that user might select one, user might select two, user might select three, right? When user select this three, 
there should be a for this there should be a, a name or a variable that should hold that variable name equal to this is what they have chose so that is where we need a name so in this case label is mandatory and practically name is also mandatory in the documentation it says label but uh, when we come to the real time scenario name is also mandatory because in order to hold what is the value that is stored can be given by the name so now let's go how to implement this how to implement the lightning select for the same thing right so right now it is displaying everything one by one now inside this lightning card i'll introduce lightning select i'll introduce lightning colon select in this lightning colon i have a name attribute and then i have what is the other one label, label. name and label now everything this whatever the hour iteration is there everything i'll place it into the inside this everything and place it into the inside this okay so name is basically label is what is the label that you wanted to show that on the ui select an account this is the text that i wanted to show it on the ui name so you can take any name here let's take a select one and then here instead of a paragraph what i'll do is we have a option so i'll use the option here instead of a paragraph i'm using the option here now in the option we have a one attribute called value because whenever the user is selected a name i wanted to hold the account id because it is difficult to hold the account name some records might have a same record the same name same account name so it is very difficult to hold account name so that's the reason whenever the user is selected here i need option value to tell that what is the value that what is the name that is selected for that name what is the id it is there so this is for the back end purpose so let's click on deploy this to deploy this source to org so what i'll do is i'll create a two cards okay let's see the output right now see here everything went inside this if i scroll down this is the drop down so now i can have all the records which are sitting here as soon as i select any one of them the back end the option will be there is a value what is the id of this which will be given to us given to other lightning component or anybody is needed we can developer can capture like right now user is selecting the names here but developer is actually for the developer for the developer names are not needed only the 18 digit ids or unique ids which are needed for the developers we can capture the 18 digit or a unique ids by using the option keyword now is this clear okay any question so far whatever we have done what we have done we have implemented a lightning component we have implemented a apex class in the apex class i have written the aura enabled at the rate aura enabled before the method so here in the lightning component i have used the controller equal to class name whatever the class name is there class name and then from the helper class we have a helper class within the lightning component in the helper class we have a four steps so call call server method server side method server side method and then 
पास पैरामीटर स्टेप टू पास पैरामीटर एंड देन इनवोक द सर्वर मेथड सर्वर मेथड एंड क्यू एक्शन इनक्य एक्शन so this this is what we have done then call the controller the uh, controller are calling here a uh, component this class name we have to use that from the helper we have to call it into the javascript yeah so this is what we have done so far now let's say whenever the, uh, the for this scenario we have not passed the parameter but in case if i have to pass the parameter how should i need to pass it so i know calling the server invoking nq action we know that but if i have to pass the parameter to uh, apex class how can i pass it so what i'll do is let me create one more apex class or let me take the same apex class let's go to the class account controller now i'll use i'll create a another method here at the rate aura enable now for this what i need is let's say scenario is i'm going to create a method sorry i'm i'm going to create a account so while creating the account i need to pass i need a what is the name and uh, what is the phone number everything so it's like in order to create a account what how, what should we write the logic in the apex method list i need to create only one account okay account acc create an account object add the value new no. insert account acc dot name name i'll yes. take a dynamic value here acc dot phone equals dynamic value and then acc dot rating and i'll take rating dynamic So then we'll do the insert. Now this is just an example. I'm taking it. So we need attribute name, phone, rating. So while executing the component, I need to pass the parameters. So for that we need string of a name. I need to pass the name string of a phone. and then string rating comma string rating i need these three parameters from the lightning component i need these three components from the these three parameters we need it from the lightning component so right click deploy this resource or required return statement so we have to return return acc let's take uh, acc dot id okay so now deploy this resource or perfect so it is done now what i'll do is in the component i'll create a button in the component i'll create a button so the logic which i'm going to implement right now is in the same lightning component i'm going to use a, a button here 
So let's say that this is a create button. So this is create button. So when I click on a create button, when I click on a create button, it should call the Apex business logic and then it should pass the data to the that particular method. What are the data that it needs to pass? It should pass name, it should pass phone, it should pass rating. So based on these values, this method is going to perform a business logic. This method is going to perform a business logic. So right now I'll be passing the name, phone, rating, hard-coded values. But in the real time, how we will be having, we will be having a input fields here, account name, account phone, account rating, right? So user will be entering here and there will be a save button. So when we click on a save button, we need to capture what is a user has entered here uh, in the account name, what is the user has entered account phone number, what is the user has entered account rating, capture those fields and pass those fields to Apex. For now, I'm going to do hard coding. Okay, so here in the component, I'll create a button. So let's say that if I want button in the right side, what is the tag that I need to use it? Our asset. Our asset. Attribute. Actions. Is this correct actions? And then I'll write the lightning colon button. Inside this, we have a attribute called label. Let's say that this is a create account. And then on click. On click of this, I need to call a method C dot handle account. Perfect. So button creation is done. Any issue here? Do you see any issue? Any issue do you see? Okay. So this is a problem, SLDS problem. That should be fine. Now let's go to the controller. My controller is handle action. And I'll go to the controller. Karma handle action. Let's use this. Next, where I need to call the um, uh, business logic? Helper class. Helper class. Helper class. Let me write. Helper account. Now for this, we are going to use Function Okay, so yes, step one, you have to tell right now. What is the step one? What do I need to write it here? Very well. All the server side well. Oh. Variable action equal to component dot get get the method c dot method name. What is our method name? Create icon. 
create account. Okay. Now I'll write this past params later. Let's take a step three. What is the step three? Uh, action dot. Get callback. Set callback. Set callback. This comma mm -hmm. function. And then we'll have a response. Then open. So once the response is back, then I'll simply get the value. So var res equal to, let's get the response, dot get written values. Now here, the final one is, dollar a dot, In Q action, pass the action. Where well, it is expected come. Okay. Now the second step. Second step, in order to pass the parameter, action dot, you have to use the set params. Set params. Inside this set params, First, what you need to check is what is the order of the parameter? What is the order of the parameter? So first take that order of the parameter. So name, and then we have a string, and then we have a rating. So this is my order. So everything place it into the double quotes. Name, phone number, if you are writing a capital P, capital M, anything which is a different, like here, first letter is for the name and phone small. For the third one, it is a capital. So that's how here it is defined. So you have to define it in the same order. You have to define in the same order. So let's say name equal to, I'll say that lightning component. Lightning component, let's give the phone number, colon. Everything you have to pass it into the double quotes and then rating colon. Let's say one. Perfect. So let's say now this method, whatever this helper method is there, this helper method, I need to call it from JavaScript. Now let's say now let's go back to the developer console. Ma'am deploy. Oh, I have not done deploy. Um so let's deploy. Did I do the deploy of class? Yes. So next thing is that I need to deploy the controller. So sorry, component. Deploy source to the component uh, to org. Something is wrong here. Response. Let me not take any response here. Control S. Right click, deploy source to org. Attributes. 
it should be attribute on us is it attributes or attribute 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 so right click deploy source to org still there is a problem uh, yeah ma'am a uh, lightning cord uh, uh, we we use uh, auto call and set attribute equal actions uh, out of the lightning cord we have used yeah it should be maybe that's yeah that's right cut this and place it here let's say now it should work deploy source to org set callback action dot set callback citation expected is colon okay so right click deploy source to org still hmm. so what should be the issue here let me rewrite this. Action dot set callback. Okay, this comma function response and the curly braces close it. Okay, now deploy. Source to org. Okay, perfect. And what I'll do is, okay, first let's check this. Now refresh. Okay, create component. It might have created the lightning component. So let's go here. Sales. Account. So lightning component. Right, so on the UI, we cannot able to understand whether it is able to create it or not. So what I'll do is where res equal to result equal to, I'll take a response dot get a return value. And then I'll show it as a alert, alert of the res. And let's save it, deploy source to org. change the name lightning component one right click deploy the source to org okay so let's go here 
Let's refresh. So create component. What is happening here? Return value. What is the status? Status is not return value. This did create the lightning component or not? Sorry, did it create the account record or not? It has created, but what is the return value which I am printing it back to the sales for back to the lightning component? acc dot id so when i got when i'm passing the acc dot id okay so what i'll do is console dot log i'll print the res which is a json dot string file json dot string file res now let me show you the debug point of it. So deploy this sales to org. Okay. So let's take this, right click, inspect, console, source org, yeah, source org, component, our, okay. undefined it says undefined id is undefined what is the reason it is undefined I mean, if in a text class, we use a ID as a written type. ID as? Written type. In method, we have used a string. So let's pass the name, then right click and deploy this source to R. Inspect, oh sorry, refresh. We can create still. And what is the console it is giving? We can create undefined. Let me check the status. What is the status it is coming? So first check the status, if the status equal to success, then go here and then show me the alert. If else, alert, let's say no response. Okay, so let's deploy this source to work. Okay. 
Okay, so let's click on your create account. State is not defined. Okay, so before state, I need to get the rest state of it. So where state equal to response dot get state. Okay, so let's deploy resource to org. Now let's refresh. Okay, create account. So what is the output I'm getting here? Click on okay. This is interesting. Util dot apply. But my records are getting created at the back end. Records are getting created from the back end. See, all the components are getting created. Um, uh, what I'm checking is why I'm not able to debug. So that's what I'm checking here. So we have a pages component, but I cannot see my components here. Yeah, here it is. Okay. Now I got it. So LC underscore name. And that's my JS. But I don't see my component. Um, why I'm not able to see the point. So let's go to my profile. Let's go to my user. Okay, advanced user details. Edit. Debug. Okay, so let's click on debug mode, click save. Now let's click on aura. Okay, now I'm able to hit the debugger. Okay. So why I was uh, verifying this is whatever the steps that we have written in the helper controller. Okay. I just wanted to uh, show you that how the execution is happening on the NQ action. How the execution is happening on the NQ action. Now, so this is, I clicked on a create account button. When I clicked on a create account button, the first thing is that what it is doing, component.get c.create account, component.get c.create account. So now my action will contain all the properties of that particular method. So what are that particular method has everything it gets contained. Now the second one is, in the action, we have, so in the action, we have a uh, one of the variable called set param, one of the variable called set param. So in this set param, I'm passing all the values. 
So if I say action dot set param, so this set param will be containing all my whatever the values are there, everything will be stored here in this set params. Now in the action, we have a, another, another method is called set callback. Another method is called set callback. So two methods we have in the action. One is a set params, and then we have a set callback. Now next cursor, it is going into the set callback. Now observe this. Let me place it here. Okay, set callback, it goes, after set callback, it did not go inside this. After the set callback, what is happening inside this set callback, I have written so much of logic, but it just executed, it just hit this, it just hit this one. Then it verified that it is a set callback. So it is not the right place. So it has to go to the, this place first. So first step, it went to the component.get and then it went to the set params and then it went to just cross verified what is the next one. It is a set callback. So don't go inside right now of the set callback. So the next thing which I need to execute is NQ action. So NQ action will have a multiple information. It's kind of a framework which has a, all the actions are queued up there. Now, once this logic is executed, I kept the debug point at the inside of this here, okay? I kept the debug point inside of this. Let me keep it here also. Now, if I click on run, and if I click on next, what happened? It went back to the, my JavaScript. It went back to the JavaScript. Till now, callback did not happen. Till now, the callback did not happen. It went back to the JavaScript. Now, after that, it is hitting my business logic. It's going to the, my, whatever the, uh, the, uh, the class name or the method name, whatever it has, it is going into the, my class method. So that particular method, it is hitting it and we are returning the, whatever the output is there, it is returning back to me. So once it is returned, then I'm hitting back to the, what are the set callback inside? We have a logic, it, I'm hitting here. So now I'm back to the, my own logic in the helper account, status is success. Now the response dot get return value. What is the response dot get return value? It has so many things are there. So many things are there. So now REC has so many information here. Out of this, I need to get only the name. So in case if you wanted to know, you can also put it here. Watch. So refresh, let's add the RES. Okay, so let me add JSON dot string file. JSON dot string file, let's say response. Okay, so this is ID is So right now, this is my output. It has so many information here. Okay. So this is my output here. So what is the output? It is giving me all the information. Marker, parameters, these are the parameters and version null, ID is for now it is null. Right, these all are it is giving. Okay, so now let me print the RES also.
Arias. Arias also so much of information. JSON dot string pipe. Now I'm printing RES here. It says undefined, that's fine. So let's move on. So basically this get return value is having a so much of data. It has so much of data. We need to identify where is the actual name it is getting created. So we will see that later, but this is the execution. So the execution is first step, it is happening at the action. First, it will go to the action. Then the cursor will go to the set params. Then the cursor will check only this part, set callback. Then immediately it will go to the $NQ, $A.NQ action. It will go to the this one. So this is the first execution. This is the second one. And then this is the third, just it will hit it. And then this is the fourth one. Once this is the fourth one is done, then it will go back to the Apex class. I have a Apex class business logic, the method. It will hit the method. And once the method is hit and it will return back, right? So when it is written back, that's how it goes back to the callback. So it will go here. So this is the fifth step. So it will go back to the this particular callback and it will execute all this logic, whatever the callback it has, then we can see the output. Any questions? Okay, so let's go back to our homework. Implement a lightning component to display all account names and rating and industry field in tabular format. So that means you need to implement a data table. So using the lightning colon data table in the data table, you need to show all the account names here, all the ratings here, all the industry is here. So by calling the server side controller. Second one, implement lightning component to create a new contact record based on the user input. So what is this? So you need to have a user interface where you will have a contact first name, contact last name, contact phone number, contact email. Now here one button will be there, save. So when you click on a save button, it should call the server side controller. It should call the server side controller. And in the server side controller, pass all these values, whatever the values are there, pass these all the values to the server side controller. And based on that, create a new contact and then give a response back to the set callback. So that is the second one. Third one, implement lightning component to display select list for account based on the account name display based on the account name in the selection display account name, account number, account revenue, account uh, industry, phone number, packs, right, rating and address. So what is this? So basically, this is the user interface. In the user interface, implement a lightning select. Implement a lightning select. 
So here in the drop down, you will have it. All the accounts will be there. So based on whatever the user has selected here, you need to show for that particular account ID, you need to show account name, account number, account revenue, account industry, account phone number, account fax, account rating, and then account address. So based on this lightning select selection, display these fields at the bottom. That is the third one. Any questions in the homework? Now let's move on to the questions. What will happen if I specify at the rate or I enabled before the method in Apex? Enable the uh, enabling the uh, our ID or a component. Mm -hmm. Others. It's not enable the method to invoke by lightning. No. Lightning allowed or a component. Right? Bharati, Rohit, Sibita. It will allow us to uh, invoke by lightning component also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, next one. What is the use of Aura enabled annotation? That is, what is. First one is what is Aura enabled? And this one, what is the use of Aura enabled? Jyoti. It is used on Apex class static methods to make them accessible as remote controller actions. Yes. So by using this Aura enabled, we can able to access the Apex class static methods to make them accessible as a remote controller action in Lightning component. How to call the server side method? Rohit, Naresh. Component dot uh, component. C component, component dot C dot method name. Right. So how to pass parameters to server side method? Set params. Action dot set params. Set param. uh, variable name value. Right. And how to invoke server side method? Action dot dollar. Action dot dollar A. Okay. Action dot set callback. What is NQ action? Dollar A dot Dollar A. Dollar A dot set of action. Set of actions that stay uh, that sits into the queue. No, this we will see to uh, next week. And that's all for today. Next week again the component event. And we will see how how can we get the response back. Okay, so this response, whatever we are getting it, it's not. Wait a second. Wait a second. Um. Okay. So whatever this response dot get value. Copy this. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so we will see how to get the response back to the ID. So whatever we are passing it, it's not coming in the proper way. So I'll show you next week. 
Okay, that's all for today.